This is Vesta's 1 100th scale Sturm Tiger, an interesting entry in their late war German plastic range. The Sturm Tiger is a heavy assault gun armed with a 38cm rocket launcher designed to support infantry and demolish buildings and strong points. It was based on a Tiger I chassis and only 19 of these were ever produced. The back of the box just shows a three view of the completed unpainted tank. With 19 parts, the build is too complex for just an exploded diagram. Let's look inside the box. The parts are on two sprues of light grey plastic in a sealed bag to keep everything together. As I expected from this more complex build, there's an instruction sheet which breaks the assembly down into several steps. The steps are clear, well detailed and easy to follow. Let's get the bag open and look at the parts. This first sprue has the upper hull, hull rear, some of the gun parts and the suspension. There is some nice engine deck detail here and you can see the moulding is nice and crisp. The second sprue has the one piece tracks, lower hull and some of the internal bracing pieces used in this snap together kit design. There's good road wheel detail here and the lower hull has some access panels. This will probably not be seen when the kit's assembled but it's a nice touch. There are some other minor parts on this sprue as well. That's the parts, let's start the assembly. The first step shown here on the instructions is for the lower hull and suspension. You can see here how the bracing pieces fit into the hull to hold the suspension plates in place. Snip the lower hull piece from the sprue. This edge will not be visible in the completed kit, but clean up any sprue gate material on the edge to get a good fit. Snip off the internal bracing pieces, followed by the suspension plates. The Tiger chassis had eight road wheels per side with each road wheel mounted on a torsion bar running under the hull floor. Fit the bracing pieces inside the lower hull piece. Check the instructions for the correct alignment here. Then the suspension plates fit onto the pins in the bracing pieces. These can be a bit fiddly but they'll hold them tightly in place when you get them on. The one piece tracks come next. Snip them off the sprue. The road wheels are detailed but the track detail is simplified. This is a common feature of Sesta tracks. It will look okay painted up on the table. There are a lot of sprue attachment points on the tracks and it took a while to clean them all up. It's worth taking your time here to get a good result. When the tracks are ready, fit them to the lower hull. There are a couple of pins and posts here and they make a good tight fit. The parts are engineered so you can't put them on the wrong way. There is a front armour piece to fit to the front of the hull. It's slightly tapered, so make sure you're putting it on the right way before you glue it into place. Now we move on to the upper hull. Snip the one piece upper hull and the superstructure piece from the sprue. The edges here will be visible on the completed model, so trim and sand these down to remove any excess sprue material. The next step is damned fiddly. The main gun mount is a two piece spherical assembly which fits over pins in the hull piece. It feels like you need three hands here, especially when you're trying to film the process as well. With perseverance and some cursing it goes together, and allows free elevation of the main gun. Now you can snip the gun muzzle and shield pieces from the sprue. They'll need a little clean up, particularly on the muzzle. The hull mounting also needs to be snipped off for this step. It has mounting lugs top and bottom and these snap into place in the hull. A little glue here will keep it firmly in place, but be careful to avoid gluing the working parts of the elevation assembly. Fit the barrel to the gun shield. There are keyed slots here to guide correct alignment. Push the parts home for a good tight fit. The completed gun then pushes onto the hull mounting. Again, this is keyed to guide correct assembly and hold the gun on tightly. The MG34 ball mount on the front glasses plate is next. A pin on the gun just pushes into place on the hull and fits securely. A drop of glue will hold this in nice and tight. Some air cleaner fittings on the engine deck complete the upper hull assembly. Fit the upper hull to the lower hull assembly. Pins on the bracing pieces mate to the upper hull, holding it firmly in place. The rear hull plate also fits to pins on the bracing piece. I didn't get as good a join here as I'd hoped. Next time I'd probably fit the rear hull piece first. Final details like the ammunition crane need to be added, and that completes the build. This is the finished Sturm Tiger. The build was a bit fiddly in places, particularly around the main armament, but it builds up into a great kit. The only real issues here are the simplified track details and the engine exhausts. 
These components are both simplified to speed production and keep kit costs down. The tracks are standard for Zvezda and aren't really a problem. The exhausts are a bit more visible. They might need drilling out or detailing. Otherwise, this is a great kit of an obscure but exciting Tiger derivative. Let's look at some history. The Sturm Tiger was a specialised assault gun developed to provide heavy fire support to infantry units, particularly in urban fighting. The requirement for this type of vehicle arose from the German experience fighting in the ruins of Stalingrad. Earlier assault guns, like the Sturm Infantry Geschütz based on the Stug III chassis and the Brumbar on the Panzer IV, mounted 15cm howitzers, but German designers were looking to build a vehicle that could demolish a building or strongpoint with a single shot. Rather than design a new large calibre gun, they turned to an existing weapon, a 38cm Raketenwerfer in use as an anti-submarine weapon by the Kriegsmarine, the German Navy. This weapon had a stubby barrel and fired a rocket-propelled 38cm or 15-inch hollow-charge projectile, weighing about 350 kilos. That's over 770 pounds. A big chassis was required to carry this large weapon and absorb the firing stresses. The Tiger 1E was chosen, and the result was the Sturm Tiger assault gun. Only 19 of these specialised vehicles were ever built. Sturm Tiger superstructures were constructed and mounted on rebuilt Tiger 1 hulls. Only 14 main gun rounds could be carried. Rounds were loaded via a large hatch in the rear of the superstructure using a built-in crane. Sturm Tigers were meant to be accompanied by a munitions carrier also based on the Tiger chassis, but only one was ever completed. The Sturm Tiger had an MG34 and a ball mount on the glasses plate, and an S-mine launcher for close-in anti-infantry defence. Because it was meant to fight in close quarters, it had heavy armour, and the vehicle weighed 68 tonnes, 10 tonnes more than the Tiger I. The weapon had a characteristic series of small holes around the muzzle opening. These are venturi holes to vent the propellant gases of the rocket round, preventing them entering the fighting compartment. Sturm Tigers entered service in August 1944, with two vehicles fighting in the Warsaw Uprising. They also took part in the Ardennes Offensive and the Battle for the Bulge at Remagen. The nature of the war had changed by the time they were in service, and they were generally not employed in their intended role as bunker busters. Here are the stats for Sturm Tigers in Flames of War. The RW61 gun is hull mounted, which means the weapon has a limited firing arc. It can only engage targets in front of a line drawn across the front of the hull. The hull mounted MG has a similar restriction. The armour protection is an impressive 12 on the front and 8 on the sides. This makes Sturm Tiger a challenging target for anything except the heaviest allied anti tank weapons. All that armour comes at a cost. Sturm Tiger is a slow tank, so it lumbers along on the table. It's also overloaded, which means it fails a bogging check on a die roll of one or two. Overloaded vehicles must also re-roll successes when crossing very difficult going. The RW61 main weapon only has an anti-tank of 6, and it has a minimum range of 8 inches or 20 centimetres, meaning it can't engage close targets. But it is a bunker buster, so infantry teams, gun teams, passengers and unarmoured vehicles automatically fail their saves when hit. Because the weapon is classed as a rocket assault howitzer, armoured teams make armour saves against their top armour rather than front or side armour. Don't add plus one to the vehicle's top armour if the range is over 16 inches or 40 centimetres. Any platoon hit by the RW61 is automatically pinned down. The Sturm Tiger will also pass firepower tests with a firepower of 1+. Plus. But it can't move and shoot. The awkward layout special rule means the Sturm Tiger can't fire the main weapon in the shooting step if it moved in the movement step. Sturm Tigers also have the bunker fire special rule. Instead of normal shooting, the Sturm Tiger can choose to use this rule when engaging gun teams, teams in buildings or bunkers. The roll to hit using this rule is just a skill test. Additionally, if a Sturm Tiger hits a team in a building, teams in adjacent rooms and above or below the team which was hit are also hit. Sturm Tigers are also better at engaging bunkers than other teams, so the 16 inch 40 cm range restriction doesn't apply. So the Sturm Tiger is swings and roundabouts. It's heavily armoured and the RW61 rocket is a devastating weapon with a ton of special rules and massive firepower. On the other hand, the Sturm Tiger crawls along and can easily get stuck. It can't fire if it moves and can't engage targets closer than 8 inches or 20 centimetres. 
but I can't help but think they must be a terrifying opponent to see on the table, and using them against bunkers or infantry in buildings must be a sight to see. So that's the Zvezda Sturm Tiger. It was a great build and looks great. The detail is generally good and apart from some fiddly assembly around the gun area it builds up nicely. Track detail is limited, a common feature of Zvezda kits, but I think the exhausts might also be an area people want to detail up a bit more. But I'm pretty happy with mine and this is a great kit to have available in the Stop the film! I'd completed this video when I noticed the gun shield on my kit seemed to be the wrong way up. I thought I'd made a mistake but I'd followed the kit instructions. Here they clearly show the orientation of part A7 with the sharper angles upwards. This is at odds with all the historical images in my research which all clearly show the sharper angles at the bottom and the flatter portion of the gun shield at the top. Here it is again. This is clearly the other way round from the kit. Even Zvezda's box art has the gun shield up the wrong way. Then I found this. This is the Sturm Tiger in the Kubinka Museum in Russia. This is obviously the example Zvezda based their kit on, and you can see the gun shield is on upside down compared to the historical images. It should be possible to put the ball into the turret the other way up and assemble an accurate Sturm Tiger. Just make sure the tongue piece on the ball mount is at the top rather than the bottom. Anyway, back to the film. As I was saying, but I'm pretty happy with mine and this is a great kit to have available in plastic. It's a great addition to Zvezda's late war German heavy tank range.